Hey guys, so this video is about should you play in BDO in 2018? Yes. Alright, but why? So BDO is currently the only major sandbox MMO that offers exciting and fun PvP content. While there are problems with the cash shop, the enhancement system, the servers, the publisher, and the community, BDO is at its core a fun and exciting game with excellent combat mechanics, beautiful graphics, and fun gameplay, all of which serve to make it stand out among today's MMOs. So as a sandbox MMO, BDO's only real competition comes from outdated games such as RuneScape, the old school version, and non-MMOs such as Skyrim. Popular MMOs such as World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV are theme park MMOs with tab-targeting combat systems, while other M action MMOs, such as Terra or Blade and Soul, do not offer the same level of freedom outside of combat as Black Desert does. It is here that Black Desert's combat system really proves its worth, as the combat in Black Desert feels far better than the combat in the theme park MMOs, and is in pa on par with the combat in games such as Blade and Soul. The only other notable sandbox MMO of recent years was Archeage, and due to problems with the implementation of pay-to-win items in the cash shop, players quit Archage en masse a few years ago. As a result, it is not really a threat to BDO, and BDO is the only true sandbox MMO on the market. The graphics of Black Desert also do a lot to set it apart from its peers. The realistic character models and the beautiful game world stand in stark contrast with the outdated and cartoony graphics of World of Warcraft or Old School RuneScape, the still realistic but much more stylized graphics of Guild Wars 2, or the anime-inspired graphics of Terra, Blade and Soul, or Final Fantasy XIV. While there are limitations on the graphics of Black Desert simply due to PC specs or bad optimization, it is undeniable that Black Desert simply looks amazing. Black Desert's gameplay is also worth mentioning, and it's here that Black Desert first starts to falter. Black Desert does nothing new in terms of MMOs. The core gameplay loop of grinding monsters endlessly until you can upgrade your gear so you can grind better monsters or grind faster has been around for more than a decade, harking back to iconic Korean and Western MMOs such as MapleStory, EverQuest, and FlyFF. Outside of combat, the inclusion of crafting mechanics and life skills is neither innovative or new, and the way crafting is implemented uh, even manages to feel somewhat lackluster compared to older games such as World of Warcraft, RuneScape, or Guild Wars 2 where crafting feels better and much more involved, despite the similarities between the systems. Black Desert's crafting simply has you setting up a worker empire and then processing the resulting materials into better items. For most of the more important items, for such as armor and weaponry, your character doesn't even get to make them themselves, but instead turns the items back over to their workers, who will then manufacture the item for you. The resulting system is both overly simplified and at the same time highly complex, as the worker empire is almost never properly explained in-game, and also manages to take the player out of the loop, as the player doesn't really feel like they are personally creating the items. For players who are looking for a game where they can dedicate themselves to crafting, Black Desert certainly will allow them to spend the entire day doing so. Yet, the entire time you will be AFK with almost no player interaction. Also, unlike other MMOs, gathering is not the primary way of gathering most materials, with a few notable exceptions such as logs and rough stones. This has the effect of removing the player from the crafting process, and really taking away the feeling of satisfaction that comes with making a really cool item, or a really powerful piece of gear. Moving on to gathering, this is yet again another spot where Black Desert really drops the bar. Black Desert, Black Desert, since its launch, has had something that is usually only seen in freemium mobile phone games, an energy bar. This energy is used for a number of key systems in the game, the most noticeable of which is gathering. Unlike games such as RuneScape or World of Warcraft, where the only thing limiting you from gathering herbs and ores all day were spawns and your ability to discover them, Black Desert prevents you from gathering any more once your energy is gone, unless you pay to either purchase energy potions, whose value can be somewhat controversial because it can be hard to earn as much money as you pay for the potions, or to pay real money to triple the rate at which you regain energy. In addition to this, increasing your maximum energy cap is done through something called energy topics, 
which can be both tedious and annoying to complete. While some players will love doing energy topics, other players will absolutely hate them, but are forced to do them anyways, simply to allow them to gather or use energy on other in-game systems that require energy. While it is quite simple to increase your max energy, the fact that there is an energy system at all in a buy-to-play PC game is quite aggravating and really diminishes uh, gathering for a lot of players. Now, the combat is amazing, and it, may, it does a lot to make up for most of Black Desert's gameplay grievances. The combat in Black Desert simply feels great, there's no other way to put it. The fluidity of the moves, the way a character's combos link together and allow the player to punish their enemies, and the almost Dynasty Warrior-esque feeling of simply mowing through hundreds to thousands of monsters is incredibly, incredibly good. Like, there is no other MMO that I have played in the last several years that really lets you feel as powerful as you feel in Black Desert. At the end of a long day at work, you just get to come home, boot up your computer, go to uh, any random place and start mowing through monsters like crazy. Each class also has their own unique style, and there are enough classes for everyone to find a combat style they enjoy. If you want to play a magic and explosions focused caster, you can play a wizard or a witch. If you want to play a quick nimble assassin, you can play a ninja or a kunoichi. If you want to play a steadier and more sturdy fighter, you can play a warrior or a valkyrie. There are classes for everyone, and they're all very enjoyable. Player versus player combat is also very enjoyable in Black Desert, although this does come with a small addendum. Player versus player combat is very enjoyable in Black Desert when fighting against another player with a similar gear score and who is not playing a class that counters your own. Fuck strikers! Black Desert is also fairly unique nowadays in that it's one of the only games to offer both world PvP and also actively support it. While there are valid claims that world PvP is pushed, punished more harshly than it should be, as well as complaints with the balancing of the classes and the lack of viable grinding spots, just the fact that Black Desert is supporting open world PvP in an age where most games are neutering or removing it entirely is a fact worth mentioning. The end game in Black Desert is also PvP oriented in Node Wars and Sieges. These are large guild versus guild style encounters where guilds create bases and do battle destroy the other's base. They are not limited to merely a single guild versus another guild, but can have multiple guilds going at it in a battle royale or an alliance of several guilds banding together in order to take down the top dog. They are a lot of fun and most guilds would like to do them because they offer a lot of rewards if you can successfully win a node or, even better, win a castle. I will note, however, that you do need a decent gear score to start participating in these, so it could take a new player a couple weeks before they can really start participating in these and making a difference outside of sitting in a flame turret or some other siege weapon. However, even if you do have low AP or low power levels, you can just sit in a siege weapon and help your guild out. So, it's not all bad. The downside of each class being so individual and fun to play is that Black Desert makes having alts a very painful experience. Most games use either a bag system to limit the number of items a player can store in their inventory, such as in World of Warcraft, Guild Wars 2, and Path of Exile, or else they use a weight system to limit the number of items a player can carry, such as in Skyrim. Black Desert, however, makes use of both, and they limit the upgrades to both systems to the cash shop. On top of this, upgrades are not per account, but per character, so that $50 worth of weight that you just purchased for your wizard so they can grind better and carry more potions is totally useless when you want to switch over to your warrior, who now has the still has the minimum number of weight. Same with the inventory spots. If you purchased 30, 40, 50, even 100 inventory spots for your warrior, your wizard is still going to have the base number of inventory spots. So... It can feel pretty bad trying to make an alt just because the systems that you invested in, if you paid any real world, world money, are for the most part constrained to the character that you purchased them on. That's not even mentioning the difficulty of leveling in Black Desert and the even harder task of upgrading your weapons. Leveling in Black Desert is more of an old school experience. It involves hours and hours of grinding the same monsters over and over again in order to level up, especially once you hit level 56. Getting to 50 can take a while on your first character, but for most people getting to 50 only takes about an hour once they're established in the game. 
but getting past 56 will take hours and hours of leveling, uh, almost about doubling with each level past it. The Black Desert does not have a hard capped level cap, but it does have a soft cap. Past level 61, leveling is not impossible, but very, very difficult. And past level 62, leveling is almost impossible. So leveling alts, especially because you do want your characters to be level 60 to unlock all their skills and pretty much achieve their maximum amount of power, having alts in Black Desert, unless you're an extremely hardcore player, can be a rather aggravating experience. Also, without proper gear, which can only be spent getting millions and millions of, or and later even billions of silver upon a single upgrade, leveling can truly be a chore, despite the fun of combat in Black Desert, as you do need powerful weapons to fight stronger monsters who give you much more experience and money. Gear is another discussion entirely in Black Desert. Unlike other games, Black Desert does not utilize the gear treadmill. Instead of releasing a new set of armor and weapons to chase after every month, Black Desert's gear remains the same month after month. Enhancing this gear, however, is beyond difficult and involves large amounts of both money and RNG. For, uh, so there are 20 upgrade levels in Black Desert. You start at plus 0, and you can go all the way up to plus 20. Past plus 15, they are called Pry at plus 16, Duo, Tri, Tet, and then plus 20 is called Pen. And each of these upgrades will cost tens of millions to even billions of silver. Which would not be so bad if it weren't for the intentional limiting of the materials used to enhance, and the fact that past duo, so plus 17, an item will downgrade if you fail to enhance it. Which, with the very low chance of succeeding in an enhancement, happens quite often. With a chance of success boarding between about 10% and impossible for plus 19 to plus 20, Downgrading your hard-earned plus 18 and plus 19 gear is a very common occurrence, and can all, this can lead to an entire month, months or even more worth of progress disappearing as the item you worked so hard to get upgraded to plus 18 and plus 19 goes back down a level. Luckily, however, with the exception of weapons, every piece of gear is usable and transferable between characters. There is no soulbound status, your perfect chestplate can be transferred between all the characters in your account, as can your gloves, helmet, boots, rings, earrings, necklace, and your belt. Even some of the main hand and offhand weapons can be used on different classes. For example, the Dark Knight and the Berserker share the same ornamental knot offhand. The Tamer, the Ninja, and the Kunoichi share the short sword as their main hand weapon. So what this means is... Working on one of your account's gears, so one of your character's gears, does not prevent your other characters from growing stronger, as you can then transfer that gear between your characters. You can also sell it back to the marketplace later if you grow tired of the class and want to switch to someone else without losing a lot of the money you've put in. The marketplace tax is about 15%, and the marketplace does have fixed prices, which can somewhat lowball you on higher end items, but if you're just looking to sell your item and purchase another one for the market price on the marketplace, then you're only going to lose 15% of the total value of the equivalent item, which is pretty good. So the gear is both a blessing and a curse. The downside of Black Desert's enhancement system being so insanely difficult is that it essentially makes paying for the convenience items in the shop which speed up your progress, such as pets, weight increases, and value packs, turn from simply items that make the game easier and let you skip some of the grind into items that let you leap ahead of your fellow players and for the most part stay ahead. While RNG is certainly going to be a factor, because players that pay money can get more chances at it, the RNG will most likely work out in their favor, especially if they have average RNG. The more silver you pump into your gear, the stronger you'll get, provided RNG doesn't screw you over. Which means these items which allow you to make much more silver per hour provide players with a real increase in power after only a short time using them. However, the fact that there's no gear treadmill is kind of nice because it means all your progress is essentially permanent. You can quit Black Desert and come back 5 or 6 months from now and you will be in the exact same place relative to where you are before. The player base may have advanced further than you in the meantime, maybe the average uh, level went up by 10 ability power or went up by 20 armor, but for the most part, you will still be at the exact same level of power as you were when you left. They, do, they have not made it a habit of releasing regular upgrades to the enhancement system to allow you to go higher. The only upgrade ever was from plus 15 to plus 20, and plus 15 is very easy to get. 
yes, it's very, a little more difficult on boss gear, but getting items to plus 17 is not very difficult. Even plus 18 is not actually that difficult once you've been playing the game for a while and know how to do it. The only real difficulties are plus 19, which is achievable if somewhat annoying, and expensive, and plus 20, which is very unachievable and very, very difficult, as well as very, 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 very expensive. But the absence of the gear treadmill does mean that you don't have to worry that if you can't play the game for a few weeks, or if you can't, uh, if you've got to go spend a few months away, if you get called away from military service, or any number of reasons, maybe you have to pay attention to your studies you are not going to lose your progress that you've made so far. Unlike in a game such as World of Warcraft or Guild Wars 2, where if you are away for part of an expansion and come back, the inflation will have gone through the roof, you will have... Well, Guild Wars 2 is actually a bad example. Guild Wars 2 does not have a gear treadmill either. But in World of Warcraft, if you're away for a few months, you will be behind in gear, you'll have to work hard to catch up, your gold will be worth less than it was when you left, and you will have to spend a lot of time grinding to catch up to the average player base. The downside, of course, is the fact that because there's no gear treadmill, uh, the devs are incentivized to make it very, very difficult to get to max gear, and I'm not sure if there's anyone in the world yet that has full plus 20 gear. There are people that are very close, that have spent tens of thousands of dollars in the game trying to get there, but I'm not sure if there's anyone that actually has it yet. And this is across all servers in the world. So getting all the, to max gear is very difficult. Uh, it is permanent progression, though, which a lot of people really like, but it's also very difficult progression, which can turn some players off, as being competitive means you need good gear, and getting good gear can be very much a struggle. The cash shop in Black Desert is certainly the most controversial topic among players. With dozens of items ranging from fairly innocuous outfits and costumes to pets that auto-loot for you, increased inventory and weight limits, as well as a subscription package of sorts with a number of benefits, there is no doubt that BDO has fully embraced the cash shop model. Whether or not the game can be considered pay to win or not is a different matter entirely, but being aware that certain items in the cash shop are vital to fast or even decent progression is something that all new players should know. There's a saying in the BDO community, the base price of the game is $5, and then you add another $50 for pets. While that does not include spending money on maids, a value pack, higher tier pets, or weight, pets are probably the most convenient item to own from the shop as they make simply grinding and playing the game feel much smoother, while also increasing a player's silver per hour immensely while grinding. Plus, they're mad cute. Like, some of those pets are really, really cute. In the end, Black Desert is one of the only MMOs of its kind on today's market. The lack of good sandbox and PvP focused MMOs means that Black Desert's place near the top of the MMO pile is here to stay at least for the near future. And quite honestly, it does deserve it. The base game is beautiful and incredibly fun to play. Combat is fast paced, feels great, and there's a wealth of content to explore that doesn't involve simply killing things with blades and magic although there's also a wealth of content to explore that does involve killing things with blades and magic as well, for if you're into that. The depth of character customization and the nearly endless road to max gear, allowing for continuous improvement of your character, are also unique selling points that set Black Desert apart from other MMOs. While the game does have a number of issues concerning its servers, as well as the monetization and use of the cash shop, I would still recommend Black Desert to anyone looking for a fun MMO that they can really sink time into and work hard to get better at. Anyways guys, I hope that this video has kind of helped you decide on whether or not you should play BDO in 2018. Obviously I'm kind of biased as, well, I create content for BDO, a lot of my videos are BDO videos. but. Apart from the cash shop, Black Desert has a lot of unique charms and a lot of things going for it. The graphics, like I've mentioned several times, are top tier. There are... I cannot think of another MMO with graphics on the same level as Black Desert's in terms of really realism, if we're going like that. Other games certainly have stylized graphics that suit them perfectly, but Black Desert has gone for a very realistic style of graphics, and it really shows. Black Desert's also gone for a very realistic style of gaming. It's a lot more old school, and there's a lot of modern conveniences missing from the game that we take, kind of take for granted today. There's no fast travel or teleporting, which means you need to use horses to get 
anywhere you want to go in the game, or simply walking, although that takes a long time. With horses, you can traverse the game map, which is pretty huge actually. The game map is fairly expansive, and there's a lot to explore. And it doesn't take that long to traverse it on a good horse, probably about 20, maybe 30 minutes. But it certainly does take long enough, especially if your horse is just autopathing, and you're not actively making it go faster by sprinting. The gear system, like I mentioned, is both a blessing and a curse in that... The fact that you're always growing stronger, always progressing your character, does feel really good. However, it feels pretty bad when you meet up against someone in a PvP experience, and their gear is quite a bit better than yours, and they crush you effortlessly. No amount of skill can really make up for any decently large disparity between gear. And I'm not talking massive such as a new player versus an experienced vet with full plus 19 gear. I'm talking... If you're using full plus 17 or even plus 18 gear, and you're against someone with full plus 19 gear, they are going most likely going to wreck you unless you are a much, much better player than they are, simply due to how the gear scaling works. On the other hand, the f being able to actually grow this powerful and then experience this dominance over other players also feels really good. So while it feels really bad to be on the receiving end of it, it feels really good to kind of see the fruits of your labors paying off when you go to revisit... Uh, maybe a zone that you haven't been to for a while, just because you've gotten strong enough to move up and contend with other players in open world combat for other grinding zones. Or when a lesser geared player comes to the zone you're grinding at and you try to chase them off your spot, and you realize that you've grown much more powerful, and that feels really good when it comes down to it. Also, there's really no other games, like I mentioned, that can contend with Black Desert. Open world PvP is sort of a dying breed. World of Warcraft is trying to bring it back with its upcoming expansion, Battle for Azeroth, and I really hope it hits the mark, but World of Warcraft has its own issues with tab targeting combat and the speed of its combat. Black Desert has action combat, the combat feels fluid, it feels amazing, it's really smooth, the combat is just great, and it actively promotes open world PvP. You are encouraged to fight other players to take your grinding spot. You are encouraged to fight other players to take limited uh, resources, such as trees or sheep. And you are encouraged to fight other players to take nodes and castles with your guild. Black Desert encourages and promotes open world PvP, and that is the true endgame of Black Desert, PvP. There is no PvE endgame to Black Desert. So I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but... Black Desert PvE endgame is really just more grinding for experience in silver. There's no dungeons, there's no raids. There are world bosses, but really they're just giant loot pinatas that you go beat up on uh, once a day. They spawn at random times, but we do have windows for them that are fairly easily tracked, and it's pretty easy to tell when they spawn. And they're not really on the tier of a raid boss in World of Warcraft or Guild Wars 2 or any other game that has bosses, or even Old School RuneScape, which has its own bosses such as Black Dragon King, Caliphate Queen. Black Desert's PV endgame is really not fleshed out at all. But the PvP endgame is where it's added from Black Desert, and that is fairly unique among current MMOs. In the end, Black Desert certainly is not a game for everyone, but I would encourage everyone to at least try it out once just to see what they might be missing out on. I personally played Black Desert at launch, and I kind of dropped it for a few months because I was playing Blade and Soul at the time, I was getting back into World of Warcraft, and I kind of thought at launch that it was a bit lackluster. But when I came back to it a year later, I rediscovered it, I found there was a lot of stuff I'd missed the first time around, there was a lot of new stuff that had been added, and really the combat just shines above every other MMO I've been playing in the last 5 or 10 years, except for possibly Blade and Soul. The combat in Black Desert really is its biggest selling point, and I would definitely encourage anyone listening to this video to at least try it once on at least a free trial, and see if you like it or not. Anyways guys, thanks for watching the video. Uh, I do ho hope I convinced a few of you that were on the fence to either try it, or maybe uh, convince you that this game wasn't the game for you. And if so, that's also okay. Subscribe if you like it, and have a good one.